Hello, John from Peter Tyson. I like modern versions of retro things. I even drive a modern version of a retro car. And these retro speakers are getting more and more demonstration requests here at Peter Tyson in Carlisle. So I'm going to run through a few of my favourites. Let's just crack on. For this test I'll be using the very tasty Macintosh MA7200 integrated amplifier. Not strictly retro but I love the classic Macintosh analog meters that fit the theme. Let's do this properly and use the king of classic decks, the Lin Sondek Magic LP12. The colour even matches the Macintosh meter light. It's like I did this on purpose. And before you get in the comments, I know that the electronics massively outprice some of the loudspeakers that are early on this list. But that's not a bad thing, and it's all just a bit of fun. First up, the Wharfdale Super Denton and Wharfdale Linton. I've put these together because they are indeed, as I film this, the same price. Part of the heritage range inspired by classic Wharfdale models from the 1970s. Both excellent three-way speakers that are full of charm and hugely enjoyable sound. Both have rear-ported bass reflex cabinets and the grille is even designed to maximise performance of the drive units and minimise reflections from the edges of the cabinets. The smaller Super Denton has a 6.5 inch base unit and a 2 inch dome mid-range driver. Finished off with a 1 inch soft dome tweeter, the larger Linton has an 8 inch woven Kevlar base driver and a matching 5 inch mid-range driver, again with a similar soft dome tweeter. The cabinet is finished and wrapped in hand matched wood veneers and the finish is beautiful. They are dense and solid and just feel like good quality speakers. I cover both of these speakers in other videos, the Wharfdale Linton in a speaker comparison video and the Super Dentons in their own dedicated video. If you'd like to know more, I'll leave a link down in the description. Moving up in price slightly, we move up to the Mission 700. Quite possibly the most recognisable with its light coloured front and updated polypropylene base driver. The original larger Mission 770 that also has a modern remake was launched in 1978. A couple of years later the Mission 700 was introduced and they quickly became some of Mission's best selling loudspeakers. The new model is made in the UK in Cambridgeshire using much more modern materials and techniques two-way front ported base reflex design with a six and a half inch mineral loaded polypropylene mid base driver and a one inch soft dome tweeter. The finish is solid and exceptional quality, although the styling won't be for everybody. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. It is however very faithful to the original Mission 700. I think they look pretty cool. It's a bit of a trademark from Mission even now to mount the mid base driver above the tweeter. They claim it better time aligns the two drivers for finer integration. The thing that stood out for me was the amazingly fast controlled punchy bass. Truly impressive grip over the low frequencies made the missions very enjoyable. The larger cabinet helps them to dig pretty deep. Placement is not too fussy thanks to that front loaded bass port but they do sound better to me anyway slightly away from the wall. The mid range isn't the smoothest here, they can lean towards being a touch bright and aggressive with some recordings and the imaging and detail is not my favourite in this test but by no means the worst. They are entertaining and full of character and I couldn't blame you if you fell in love with them after your first listen. Next up the Leak Sandwich 250. They were initially launched back in 1961 and they were quite groundbreaking in their base driver construction which is where the name Sandwich comes from. They were much stronger and stiffer than rivals to minimise mechanical distortion. The new Leak Sandwich cone comprises of a stiff aluminium skin for the outer surfaces where the stresses are greatest, bonded to a thick core of PMI or polymethacrylamide based structural foam, often used in the aerospace and automotive industries. The cabinet structure consists of a composition of MDF and composite board, thus creating a second sandwich reference, with the boards layered for optimum cabinet strength. Another three-way design 
with rear base ports and optional matching stands, just like the Wharfdale Lintons. I didn't have the stands available to me, so I have just used the Wharfdale Lintons just for honesty. It's a larger 11 inch aluminium foam core sandwich base driver, a 4.25 inch aluminium foam core mid range driver, and a 1.2 inch coated textile dome tweeter. These sound very flat, they have a very flat frequency response, which is what they were a bit famous for back in the 60s. They have excellent speed and they're nice and taut, and they're able to handle transients with a plum. A pretty big stereo image as well. They are certainly one of the most unique in terms of styling and sound in this test today. By no means my favourite, but they're definitely worth a listen if you like that flat monitor sort of sound. The Fine Vintage Classic 10. Although the Fine Vintage Classic 10 may look and be named vintage, Vintage they are not. The company was launched back in 2017 by ex tannoy personnel, so they will look familiar if you've owned some classic tannoys in the past. A two way design with a downwards firing Bass Tracks Track Tricks diffuser, easy for you to say, with a 10 inch ISO flare point source driver, multi fiber base slash mid range cone with a 75mm titanium alloy dome compression tweeter with a ferrite magnet system. A modern take reminiscent of the favoured tannoy dual concentric driver. There is an energy and presence control to adjust the pictured frequency range by plus or minus 3 decibels to help with positioning and tuning for your room. Personally, I tended to leave it flat. The finish is actually pretty luxurious, with or without the included grille. I think they look Stunning. There's a nice leather loop so you can easily remove the grills if you prefer that naked driver look and there is storage on the rear of the cabinet because the grills will magnetise to them. What a nice touch. There are more fine speakers in all sorts of different styles and the similar style into these ones here. I'll leave links in the description if you want to look at more options. The sound is characterful and so very easy to listen to for long periods of time. I was quite happy sitting here listening to some classic vinyl records. Particularly low volume, they sound very pleasing. They can attack and sound powerful when the music demands. The 10 inch ISO flare driver is certainly not short of power or attack. Thanks to their 94 decibel per watt efficiency, they are very easy to drive, so you don't need oodles of power to make them sing. What do you think? Would you give the fine audio a chance? Let me know in the comments. The Klipsch Cornwall 4. Called Cornwall, not after the beautiful coastal county in the south of England, famous for its beaches and pasties. The name was devised because the speaker was designed to be placed in a corner or next to a wall. Corn Wall. Initially introduced in 1959, handcrafted in Arkansas in the USA. And what's the first thing you notice about them? The colour, the fabric on the grill. Oh no wait, they're absolutely comically huge compared to the average British living room and not the biggest speakers that Klipsch make, by the way. For reference, here is the Wharfdale Super Denton that we started the list with. To British standards, they are a huge three-way Traptrix horn-loaded bass reflex speaker with a suitably meaty 15-inch fibre composite bass driver, 1.75-inch horn-loaded polyamide diaphragm compression mid-range, and a 1-inch horn-loaded titanium diaphragm compression tweeter. The finish is Pretty nice, not the nicest here, but they're constructed well and they're obviously built to last a long time. They sound exactly as they look, absolutely massive. They are incredibly musical and expansive, totally effortless low frequencies and so much fun. I had an absolute blast listening to these big clip speakers and everybody that passed by or popped in for a listen couldn't help but smile. They can fill a huge room and rock out with the best of them thanks to that big 15 inch driver and staggering 102 decibel per watt efficiency. They can actually be laid back and subtle if you just want to relax. To me they are the equivalent of a big muscle car. Sound great, lots of fun but perhaps not the last word in luxury and refinement. Would you have these monsters in your living room? Let me know down in the comments. So that's it. I think I had the most fun with the Klipsch. I was most surprised by the fine. 
they were really standout enjoyable and the best value for money i've probably got to go the fine or the wharfdale super denton closely followed by the linton they're definitely worth a listen if you do want to come and have a listen to some speakers here at Carlisle where I am, or even at our Newcastle branch, phone ahead and we'll get everything set up for you. Here are the numbers. Links to everything in the video will be down in the description as normal, and you'll see me in the next video. Take care.